Good evening and welcome to this week's worship celebration of All Saints Weekend from our Light of Christ campus of the UPG. We begin with our prelude hymn sings. Our first hymn is hymn number 873, Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. sound like you're in good voice tonight and our next hymn is going to be blessed are they but as we're waiting uh, for that I just wanted to share with all of you and we'll talk about this more at the announcements but we now have our bringing it home ministry device available for all of our homebound members who do not have the internet so you're going to hear more about this in the announcements but I'm very excited to share this ministry with everyone our next hymn is Blessed Are They, hymn number 728. <laughs> Thank you. 
beautiful uh, hymn, right? Yeah, and that's, that's gorgeous. I love singing that hymn. Absolutely, based on the gospel text for today. And we welcome Pastor Suzanne back from vacation. And why I know that she had a wonderful time and is renewed and refreshed, I, for one, am very glad to see <laughs> you. <ya. laughs> well, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Our next hymn today will be I Am the Bread of Life, hymn number 485. I am the bread of life, you who come to me shall not hunger, and to believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless thou, Father, back beautiful hymn. Absolutely. Our final hymn for the hymn prelude is hymn number 422, For All the Saints.
We welcome you all to our All Saints Day worship celebration from the Light of Christ campus of the UPG. I also wanted to make a special wel welcome to three of people who have received their Bringing It Home devices. Awesome. So this will be the first worship that they attend and they're serving as kind of test cases for everyone else. Wanted to take a moment to thank Linda Mall for sharing her wonderful gifts of music with us today and Rich Hawk for our live stream ministry coordinator coordinator. Most of all, though, we want to thank you for uh, joining us during this worship worshipful time. All Saints celebrates the baptized people of God, living and dead, who are the body of Christ. As November heralds the dying of the landscape in many northern regions, the readings and liturgy call us to remember all who have died in Christ and whose baptism is complete. At the Lord's table, we gather with the faithful of every time and place, trusting that the promises of God will be fulfilled and that all tear, tears will be wiped away in the new Jerusalem. And now let us pray. O God of all grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us now with your spirit, that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in both spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues this evening with our prelude music song, Song for All Saints by Mary McDonald. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. This year, in place of lighting a candle for each departed saint, we will light four candles to represent four different groups of people who have entered the church triumphant. 
We will light one candle in remembrance of all those members of our community of faith or who have had their funeral services through our community of faith over the past year. We will light one candle for all of our friends and family who have entered the church triumphant over the past year and have had their name shared with our community. We will light one candle for all those who have entered the church triumphant this past year due to the COVID-19 global pandemic. And we will light one candle for all of our departed saints. And now a reading of those saints who have entered the church triumphant. Leona A. Walter Biesecker entered the church triumphant October 22, 2019. Irene Santa Maria entered the church triumphant November 10, 2019. Richard E. Bender entered the church triumphant November 16, 2019. Margaret Hawk entered the church triumphant November 19, 2019. Lucy Gorson entered the church triumphant November 20th, 2019. Arline M. Snyder entered the church triumphant December 27, 2019. August T. Kaufman, Jr. entered the church triumphant January 9, 2020. Catherine Bollitz entered the church triumphant January 9th, year of our Lord 2020. Goldie and Chando entered the church triumphant January 16, 2020. Irene Coxon entered the church triumphant February 24, 2020. Richard T. Clay entered the church triumphant February 20th, 2020. Hilda Wolf entered the church triumphant March 10th, 2020. Rose T. Warnke entered the church triumphant April 7th, 2020. Helen E. Klotz entered the church triumphant April 27, 2020. Betty J. Marshall entered the church triumphant May 8, 2020. Rose Kirchmar entered the church triumphant May 14, 2020. Pearl Reynolds entered the church triumphant May 23, 2020. Julia Kutos entered the church triumphant May 29, 2020. Margaret A. Zeiger entered the church triumphant June 2, 2020. Mary Novak entered the church triumphant June 8, 2020. 
John Holloman III entered the church triumphant, July 13, 2020. Charles Moritz Sr. entered the church triumphant, August 17, 2020. Carolyn Narcissi entered the church triumphant, August 23rd, 2020. Anne Marie Fenner entered the church triumphant, September 25th, 2020. Dorothy Scraven entered the church triumphant, September 16th, 2020. We now remember our friends and family who have entered the Church Triumphant this year and have had their name shared with our community of faith from you. Harry Bomeister, Carmen Belize, Charlie Bolton, Marietta Buss, Shirley Caldwell, June Carlson, Judy Cooper, Eric Fritz, Harold Fury, Rose Haas, Richard Harvey, Peter W. Herbner, Jr., Felicia Horashak. Patty Loke. Evelyn Maybe. Nancy J. Nadu. Nancy Nagel. Edith Shaw. Fortunata Shore, Tracy Silfries, Frank Ventura, Thomas Whitaker. Let us now take a moment to silently reflect on all people who have come before us and now rest in the comforting arms of our Lord.
Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sisters and brothers who have entered the church triumphant this year. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come now to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are, are captive to, to sin, sin and, and cannot, cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. We praise you for the saints of all times and places who have walked the road of faith before us and beside us for their witness to your love and their commitment to your justice. For their trust in your mercy, regardless of the circumstance, we give you thanks and praise. God of all creation, we praise you for all your servants who have witnessed to your truth, who have shown us your love, who have inspired us to have hope. By their example of faith, hope, and love, Remind us of your calling to join in making your new creation real in this world and the next. God of all saints, today we especially remember the saints who have lived among us, who have departed our company over the last year. We thank you for their faithful witness, for their courage amidst strife, and their hope 
in the face of death. Continue to inspire us by their faithful witness that we too might join in bringing your justice, mercy, and peace to our world. As we walk this pilgrim way, make our faith firm, our hope clear, and our love pure, that we might join the saints of all the ages in praise eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the land, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God, and they worship him day and night within his temple, and the one who is seating on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat, for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join with me in reading Psalm 34 responsively. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my tears. Look upon the Lord and be radiant. Let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. O Lord, you redeem the life of the servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. That is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. 
and all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now if my young people would, would get closer to the screens, I'd like to talk to you. Um, can I have fives? <laughs> so, so this is one of my favorite things, and anyone who's known me for any length of time knows that I love to talk about princes and princesses right? And every one of you watching today are actually heavenly princes and princesses because just as First John wrote, we in fact are children of God. Now, I know this sounds really strange, but when Pastor Jerry was just a very little boy, if you asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would have told you an NFL football player. Oh. I would have, we, my brother and I used to play football in our house. Oh, my mother's watching. That's probably oh, not, not good. good. Right now. <laughs> right? But, but I'd like pretend that I was in the Super Bowl and running the football and jump onto the sofa. Sometimes we knocked it over, but it was like jumping into the end zone and scoring a touchdown and the fans went crazy. Woohoo! Right? But here I am today, much older, and guess what I never did? played football in the NFL. That's all right, though, because Pastor Jerry realized that he did much better sharing God's love with the world than he could ever do playing football. That's exactly what John's talking about. As heavenly princes and princesses, each one of us has these dreams and visions of what we can become. But as we grow older and mature in our years, God will keep forming and shaping us into becoming the very people we are today. And you know what? God loved you when you had those dreams when you were little. And God loves you right now. And God will love you to all eternity. Because once God makes us God's child, we will never be anything else. And we will never be anything less. So always remember that indeed you are heavenly princes and princesses and you will reign in the glory of God. Amen. Amen. High fives. High fives. <laughs> yep, I, oh jeez. <laughs> I almost hung myself with my microphone there. And uh, I think you're going to be getting a call from your mom a little later. I know, that right? Couch being That's over. not good. Yeah, Sometime not good. I'll tell you about the broken teapot. <laughs> <laughs> but not tonight. <laughs> I didn't do anything, Mom. I was perfect. <laughs> not. <laughs> the Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Then Jesus took his disciples up the mountain and gathered them around and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are those who thirst for justice. 
Blessed are you when you are persecuted. Blessed are you when you suffer. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward is great in heaven. The the Beatitudes are just so well known and so loved by all of us, and I think in many ways so comforting as well. But you know, they really do tell us something about God's kingdom, and that God's kingdom is not the world's kingdom. What is valued by our society, it's not what God values. Those of you who know me know that one of my favorite writers and theologians is Diana Butler Bass. And she wrote just the other day that she looks at the Beatitudes, are you ready for this? As Jesus' voter guide. (laughs) You know, and I think she's got that absolutely correct. And, you know, as we approach this election day uh, on Tuesday, I think the Beatitudes can guide our thoughts as we approach the polls and as we cast our votes. For Butler Bass, the words describe Jesus' political vision, what the kingdom of God will look like what Jesus imagined as he taught his followers to pray, thy kingdom come. God's dreams of a world that upends our world. You see, in God, the rich and the privileged are not blessed. The poor and the humble are. As Jesus preached this sermon, Imagine him looking out on all those people, people who were poor, people who were oppressed, the women, the widows, the slaves. And she also uh, pulled this quote from Kurt Vonnegut, of all people, and he said, everyone wants the Ten Commandments placed in public buildings. And Kurt says, I haven't heard one person who demanded that the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, be posted anywhere. But he wondered, what if blessed are the merciful if that was posted in a courtroom? Or blessed are the peacemakers, post it in the Pentagon. Something to think about. In the Beatitudes, you see, Jesus sets out for us our ethics, our moral compass. And there would certainly appear to be a wide gulf between what God is calling us to do and to be as Christians in the ways of the world. And on some level, we all know that this gulf, this wide gap, exists. We study the Bible. We teach our children. Perhaps, though, we learn it best by those saints in our lives. As today, we Celebrate All Saints Sunday, a day when we remember with love and gratitude all those who have gone before us in the faith. And we especially think of those uh, loved ones who entered the church triumphant in this last year. The list is way too long. It always is. These are the people who have shaped us. These are the people who have made us what we are today. Think about the people in the church triumphant who molded you, who had a profound and transforming effect or impact on your life. You know, the first person I think of is my grandmother. 
She was such an important part of my growing up, and we spent a ton of time together. And she taught me lots of things, how to do needlework, and um, I, I know you really like Sandy's cookies, but my grandmother's roll-out sugar cookies really do rock, too. So they're, they're neck and neck. You know, she was just so easy to talk to, and she always had time for me. When I was in college, true story, I wrote her a letter every week telling her what was going on. And you know, she always sent letters back. And good old Graham, there was always five or ten bucks in each letter. <laughs> that could buy a lot then. Yeah. Hey, wait, well, I'm mean... not that old. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean more than it can buy today. Absolutely, yeah. It would be the equivalent of maybe getting like $20 today. Um, but my life was so much richer for her presence in it. Perhaps you had a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle or some other significant person who uh, impacted your life as you were growing up. Someone who helped you understand wrong from right, who gave you your moral uh, compass, who, you know, always just seemed to have time for you. Someone who loved you unconditionally, maybe even when you didn't think you deserved it. You know, and of course, if we're talking about the saints in life, I need to talk about my late husband Doug, because he was my saint in life. He touched my life in ways that I can't even begin to describe. But do you know, he's actually the one that's responsible for me being a pastor. Hmm. He finally, get, he gave me the courage to finally answer God's call. He taught me the importance of love and family that that's what really measures a life. Family, friends, honesty, integrity, faith in God. Being the best you can be at your job, but realizing, too, that that was only a part of who you were as a person. To not get caught up in the little things, Things that don't really matter. You know, he had a really good barometer for determining what was something we should pay attention to or not. He said, in a hundred years, was this going to make a difference? And if it wasn't, there was no reason to get upset, to stress out about any of it, if it wasn't going to make a difference. Who I am today has been shaped by the saints in my life. My grandmother, my husband, my father, countless other people who are now in the church triumphant. And all of these people have helped to shape us, to transform us, to make us who we are today. We all have saints who are no longer with us, but whose impact on our lives and on the world live on every day in our lives. Saints that we remember today. Of course, too, if you read our readings carefully, they point us to a future, too. We are saints because we are chosen by God. We are, as Pastor Jerry reminded us, children of God, prince and princesses. And when someday all of our days here on earth are finished, we will join all those saints who have gone before us. We will be reunited with our loved ones. And we will be with God for all eternity. What a beautiful comforting thought. 
But our readings, too, point us to today, to this present day, to how we live our lives today, to our recognition that we are, in fact, God's beloved sons and daughters. Soon, many will receive Holy Communion, and you know that unites us with everyone gathered with us, with the saints who have gone before us, with everyone around the world. In Holy Communion, our past, our present, and our future come together to be one. And we know that we will join those saints one day, and we will be at the heavenly banquet. For now, we reside in the company of the saints on earth with us. And so we give thanks this day to those who have influenced us, who have shaped us, who have transformed us, molded by those who have gone before us and molding those who will come after us, living out our call as children of God. So we give thanks for all the saints. And we also, I think, by these readings, are challenged. What is God calling us to do in the world today? Especially as we cast our votes on Tuesday. May we remember those most in need in our society. May we remember those who are oppressed. May we remember those who are grieving, because we are all the saints together, past, present, future. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join with us as we sing hymn 429 in our day of thanksgiving. Yeah. 
now confess our common faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and on all those who are in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs whose sacrifices witness to your gospel across all time and all space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Bless all new missions of our community. Empower testimony from our new communities of faith to shape a diverse witness to your saving power. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We now lift our individual prayers to you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, Real, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of our Lord be with you. And also with you. We invite you to say hello to one another and to share the peace within our community. Once again, we want to... You okay? <laughs> I put my mic on different today, and it's just about to strangle me. You reminded me of my brother and I playing football in the house. <laughs> we want to thank everyone who's been able to generously share financial offerings. 
we can uh, we just want you to realize we continue to share all of our combined resources with people within our community who remain in need and trust me when i tell you that that need remains very great your continued offerings allow our ministry to thrive and grow and flourish even during these difficult days if i had a venture or a guest the year of our lord 2020 We'll find that there were more benevolent dollars given for God's mercy within our community than in, any, than in any year that has come before us. And so we give thanks and praise to God for the generosity that you have modeled during this difficult time. And if you're not able to make financial offerings, we give thanks and praise to God for you for the many other ways in which you provide support to our ministries. Our fervent hope and prayer is that all people would feel blessed by the love of God and the love of one another during these incredibly challenging times. If you haven't already done so, please remove the veils from the elements you have set aside for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you showed us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with all the saints, with the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of, of power and might, might. Heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the meal, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for now all is ready. The body of Christ given for Amen. you. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. I now invite those who have abstained from receiving Holy Communion to speak the prayer below as those who have received the sacrament, 
maintain silence for personal prayer and reflection on the grace that God pours out on us all. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace until eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this This bread bread of of life life and and cup of salvation, salvation, you have have united us with Christ, Christ, making making us one with all your people. people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that tomorrow morning we will be offering an in-person worship here at the Light of Christ campus of the UPG at both 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. At 11 a.m., there will be a children's message. Sunday school continues to occur on our Light of Christ campus of the UPG at 9.30 a.m. Next week, our worship celebrations will take place from St. John's Windish Lutheran Church. Our live stream worship will occur on Saturday evening with our prelude music beginning at 4.45 p.m. And we'll host two in-person worship celebrations on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. As customary, Sunday school still stays at 9.30 at the Light of Christ campus of the UPG. And I just wanted to share this kind of show and tell. I don't know if Rich can get in close enough that he can see that what the screen looks like. But if you notice, as soon as you turn this item on, this is our new Bringing It Home ministry, and this device works completely off of cellular data, so there's no need for a person to have the internet in their home. And when this comes up, there are just three buttons, and there's one button that says, Attend Online Worship. And if I click on that button, it takes me directly to the church Facebook page, and they can just scroll down here, and, wow. Wow, that's a good-looking guy. Yeah. It's me from last week. So now, all of a sudden, <laughs> people who have been home for, some of our homebound folks have been at home for over a decade and have missed worship since that time, uh, will suddenly be able to worship once again with our community of faith. So I actually think this is as revolutionary of a ministry as I've ever witnessed to people who can't make it to worship with us. Now, as you might imagine, this whole ministry costs quite a bit of financial resources. Each of our congregations willingly shared $3,000 to purchase these 30 devices. So each one of these devices costs about $300. If anyone would like to sponsor one of these devices for our homebound people, you can make checks out to St. Peter's who paid for all of the devices, and, and then as we receive money, it'll go back out to the three campuses associated with the UPG. Each one of these devices also costs $23 a month to continue to have the cellular data plan. So perhaps if you'd like to, you could sponsor one of our homebound sisters or brothers in Christ by sharing an extra $23 in your offering envelope, and those offerings should go to your home campus. But I just wanted to share with you my excitement, my joy, and tonight we have three different people who are viewing our worship for the first time since the pandemic, and hopefully by next week many more will be joining them. So thank you, everybody. Oh, and thank you so much, Pastor Jerry, for leading that uh, challenge to get everything squared so we can do this. It's 
extremely exciting and I'm, I'm delighted we're able to do this. So hi to those three folks and can't wait to add more in next week. Um, I don't believe it, but it is time to be thinking about Thanksgiving Day baskets. So uh, if you know somebody in our community of faith who may be in need, who could benefit from a Thanksgiving basket for their meal, please contact the church office or Pastor Jerry or myself. And if you'd like to help with that ministry, just make your checks out to the pastor discretionary fund to your community of faith, and all those monies will go to support that ministry. I also wanted to share with you, it was an incredibly exciting week while you were gone. Wow, maybe I should go away more often. Yeah, yesterday, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yesterday, all of a sudden, at Rich Hawk's house appeared a, U, uh, a UPG, a UPS truck, and inside that truck was all of our live stream equipment. So, so we find we've received all of our live stream equipment uh, that will be able to provide a much higher quality live stream worship for all of you. So over the next month or two, we'll be working very diligently to get that equipment up and running. And our hope and prayer is that by Christmas of 2020, we will be uh, sharing our live stream worship with really high quality live stream equipment. I'm very excited for what that equipment will enable us to do, and it's just awesome. So, yay, Rich Hawk and yeah. UPS getting yeah, us team. going. Well, you, and you know what's amazing, and I'm a little hesitant to share these numbers, but in total, between those two ministries, our communities of faith has spent $24,000 to advance the reign of Christ in the world in which we live. Now, many of each of our community of faith had money set aside in endowment for, for new ministries. I just can't think of a better use of that kind of money because truly these two ministries can impact and change the world that we live in. Oh, absolutely. When you think about who can view our worship, um, I know uh, at St. John's Windus, we have members that have scattered all over the country um, for various reasons, and uh, now they can be connected and part of the thing, and I'm sure at UPG as well. And, and I, have, I have friends, which don't be too shocked, but I do have friends, <laughs> and they um, uh, join in our uh, live stream worships too. So we are reaching people in new ways, and um, it's just awesome it to is. be a part of. So thank you all. Thank you. For your generous contributions towards uh, these ministries. Uh, as part of our continued ministries to care for others in the world, we are asking to keep your clean, unwrapped, plastic, unripped plastic <laughs> bags in order that we might turn them into sleeping mats for those who are less fortunate than ourselves. The bags can be dropped off at the back porch of the Light of Christ campus, and I heard in my absence, 25 bags or er, er, uh, sleeping mats are now done. So we're halfway to our goal. So yeah. yay on everybody. Yeah, and that's they are beautiful. I know. I am it's shocked amazing. like how beautiful they are. Like how can you take a plastic <laughs> grocery bag and make it so I nice? Know. Out of plarn. I love plarn. <laughs> really, I, I just love saying I can't it. wait to have them all here yeah, so that, that we, we can bless, bless them and, and get them out and so that give them everyone out. can see just what their, their works of art. They, they, truly they, are. they truly are. It's amazing. But thank you so much. Thank you. And just a reminder that through your continued help and support, we continue to have an abundance of resources to share with others during this difficult time. So if you or someone you know may be in need, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or Pastor Suzanne or one of our staff members, and we would gratefully assist you as ever we're able. And now a prayer for the power of the Spirit working among the people of God. God of all power and love, we, we give, give thanks, thanks for, for your unfailing, unfailing presence. presence. And, and the, the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world. A people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, 
seek justice, rest and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And now we go in peace to continue to share the good news. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.